Hello everybody, I'm Lance Koike and today we're talking about another one of those really, really, really common rowing mistakes. Uh, we've, we've already talked about two that are very near and dear to my heart. Um, this third one is, is maybe less near and dear to my heart, but still very, very common. Maybe about 75% of people that I don't train are doing this. And this is, this is actually one of the reasons that I don't really recommend the bent over row to that many people. It's complicated, right? I need this rowing variation to be a lower body exercise. I need to secure my lower body if I'm actually going to train my upper body. Now, um, having said that, I, I need to be able to do this or else I'm going to do the mistake that we're talking about today. So if your back feels really tight, your low back feels really tight after you do your rows, this is probably what you're doing. When you come on down, you're either, you're either not loading your hamstring, right? You're not keeping that straight spine position. You're overarching. You're sticking your chest out too much spine position like this. Um, or you're doing that while you row. So it's either I'm holding in this position the whole time, or I'm moving in and out of this position while I go. Okay, so what does it look like? Let's just do, we'll pretend I got a barbell, I do my RDL, and let's just say I stick the butt way out like this, and then I do this thing, okay? I, I feel some upper back, I feel some uh, rowing muscle development going on, and I'll, I'll probably get pretty jacked there, but I'll also, you know, at what cost? Is the question. I'll also turn on my low back. I'll also compress my low back joints and some of the nerves that come out of there, and it can develop some sensitivities, right? If you have, if you like frequently spaz out your back, I'm not going to give this to you unless you have really proven to me that you can master the RDL, right? With the leg drive. I want you to be able to tell me, yes, I feel that in my hamstrings and in my butt when you do an RDL. If you don't know how to do an RDL, you need to watch my other videos filmed 100 about deadlifting. If you can perfect that, then this is, and this is why people don't get this exercise for such a long time. Then you can come back here and you can try to figure this out. But if you can't secure it with your lower body, you're not going to figure it out while you're moving your arms. You got to just keep them arms still and figure out how to drive with your hips. OK. Uh, okay, so yeah, what does it look like? Either I stick my butt way out like this and I do my rows, or number two was I am setting up okay and then I'm rowing and initiating or finishing with my low back. So I get to this arched position sometime during the row. And maybe I even come out of it and then I do it again. Okay. So now this feels more like a low back exercise rather than an upper back exercise. And I suppose you could do that. Uh, I'd never recommend it to anyone. I think that when people have really hypertrophied, really muscular low backs, they generally hurt. <laughs> um, if you're just trying to be as yoked as possible and your body is really resistant to pain, you're probably not watching my videos anyway. So <laughs> it's okay. You keep doing what you're doing. Uh, what do I do to fix this? Now, I think the number one thing is you've got to learn that deadlift like we talked about, right? You've got to learn how to do this bend with some leg drive. Because if I don't feel my legs, if I don't feel my hamstrings, my glutes, then I'm just, it's not going to work, right? You, you can't, ex that's like the simplest variation that kind of still looks like this exercise, this bent over row. If I can't seem to even figure out the RDL, then maybe some of those other videos I made will help you out. Um, but in general, the back is too overactive, the abs are too underactive. In general, that is because the pelvis is tilted forward or this front bone of your pelvic ring here is down away. So my abs are stretched really long and they have a hard time contracting and I have a hard time feeling them contract. So instead, I need to make sure I'm setting up with my little hip tuck here and then even an exhale. 
Okay. And that, I, you know, right away, since I've done this a couple times, I can feel it turn on. If you're having trouble with it, then maybe you need to try some other exercises. One that I like, I, I got a guy that I'm working with right now. He's got a really tight low back curve and he lets go of the abs in the front here really easily. So what we're trying to do here is use a plank to teach him how to well, not stick his butt out like this, how to round his back, how to push his neck away from the ground, and that helps him straighten his spine out more. That helps him turn those ab muscles on. And then you can just kind of hold this for time or for breaths or whatever. If you lose the ab on the inhale, then you gotta find another way to do this, right? You gotta find a way to relax your back, or you need to practice, because sometimes it's just tight and it needs practice. I'm talking about practice. <sighs> and then when you inhale, you're looking for the back to expand. You can try stuff on your back as well, like dead bug variations or plank or uh, not plank bridge variations where I'm kind of leading with the tailbone up and then the back pressure increases in the ground. I can really feel my back sink into the ground and that's how I know that I'm in the right spot here. I don't want to do this thing because that's not helping me get these. That's only helping me get these front center abs. Those are not as important as these outer lower abs. Maybe you need to take this belly button and kind of draw it back towards uh, your spine or towards behind you. Okay. And then from there, I can do all sorts of stuff. One of my favorites to start, we already talked about a, a dead bug in another variation. So or another video. So let's try like a leg lowering. So yeah, make sure I'm not over crunching. I can feel my low back in the ground. I can bring my belly button toward the ground. That's good. And I'm just going to inhale on the way down. Exhale on the way up. So you can alternate legs. You can hold your legs up here. I like to start with the foot on the ground because it helps me secure everything. It helps people ensure that they're doing it correctly. Um, but after that, you can even try doing two legs at a time. Just like that. Um, so those are just some what are we talking about? Arching your low back. That's going to help you stop arching your low back because like we said, it's in a position where it turns on a lot. And and your just uh, the motor pattern that you have in your head for the row is one that says, I need to bend my back more. I need to arch my back. I need to initiate with my back. Last little tip that I'm going to say is once you figure out how to do this, if you do it really, really well, you're going to be a lot weaker for a short period of time. So you're going to need to take the weight down, set your ego aside, take the weight down and figure out how to do this, how to retrain with uh, a better position. And those muscles in your upper back will start to get more sore. And you're going to find that you're really good at falling back into that low back arching thing. But you're also going to get better and better at not doing it. And it's just like anything, right? It needs practice and you need to learn it. So. Good luck.